So Bohr comes up with this model of an atom where the nucleus is just it's called a planetary model, right? You have the nucleus and you might have the electrons going around the nucleus in certain orbits or rings. Those are those energy levels and those electrons could be found on there at any given time. Well, the electrons are found at distinct energy levels, but they're not found in orbits around the nucleus and that was proved to be the case, that, that they weren't doing that. They weren't orbiting like planets do around the sun. Okay, so where are the electrons? Well, we don't know. Well, what are they doing? We're not sure. What kind of a science is that? It's actually brilliant science, and it's really the way things are at the quantum level uh, in this universe. Sorry. So, who comes up with this idea and proves it to be really right as far as we can see for the last hundred years? A guy named Heisenberg who came up with this little formula called the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle. Briefly described. The uncertainty, that's what we'll say the triangle is, the uncertainty in the position of an object multiplied by the uncertainty in its momentum, which is its mass times its speed, is equal to h over 4 pi. And sometimes you'll see that as written as h over 2 pi. I'm not sure that the physicists know which one to use all the time. I'm a chemist. I don't know what to use. I'm just going with what they're telling me. Now, the thing is, here's what this kind of means in a nutshell. The more you know about where something is, the less you know about what its speed is or how fast it's going, the more you know about how fast it's going, the less you know about what its speed is. These two quantities here toggling to be able to equal that number. Now, in a kind of a practical sense, and to, just, to describe things at the quantum level, which is the small level, right? And then at the macroscopic level, the big level. Well, I'll just use this example. Say you wanted to determine um, the uh, uncertainty in the speed of a car, a typical vehicle. Okay, well, if you actually know what the position is, and by the way, you know, we can actually measure on this planet quite accurately. Well, I'm, I'll say that. Um, uh, for, for macroscopic things, we can really kind of locate where they are. We can measure down to about a picometer, which is about 10 to the negative 12 meters. So if we actually say, well, we're actually pretty certain about how, much we, how well we can measure, and if we want to take out an electron microscope almost to be able to determine where a car is, we can measure that to 10 to the negative 12 meters. That's pretty cool. So we put that in there for x. And if we put the mass of a vehicle in here, let's say it's just a, a, a 2,000 kilograms or something, and if we take those and divide into this side where h equals 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds, that's Planck's constant right there, that's h. You move those over to this side to isolate for the uncertainty in the speed, you actually get a number uh, pretty much akin to, in, in the range of, about 10 to the negative 20 meters per second for the uncertainty in the speed of a car. What the heck does that mean? Well, it just means this. How uncertain are we in the speed of a car when we measure it very, very, very accurately? Well, 10 to the negative 20 as an uncertainty is a very, very small uncertainty, which means we are really, really certain about where that car is. And that's very true. I mean, we can actually do measurements about where vehicles are given their mass and given their uh, speed, uh, position, and oh, oh man, we can actually really nail pretty much at the macroscopic level where that car is. But if you take an electron, and we know the mass of an electron, which is like 10 to the negative 31 kilograms, and you put that mass in there for an electron, and then try to solve for the uncertainty in the speed, knowing that we can measure only to about 10 to the negative 12 in terms of accuracy, and that doesn't encompass where an electron is because that's this electron smaller than that. You solve for the uncertainty in the speed, and you get the uncertainty in the speed of an electron of a magnitude of 10 to the 7, close to 10 to the 8 meters per second. But the speed of light is 10 to the 8. It's 3 times 2.9979 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So, can you imagine saying, um, you know, uh, well, here's the, uh, here's the speed of uh, the uncertainty in the speed of an electron, which is pretty much close to the uncertainty, well, the speed of light, the fastest thing that we know. So essentially, the uncertainty in the speed of an electron, if we tried to find out how fast it was going, is pretty much plus or minus the speed of light. That's crazy. That's ridiculous.
Yeah, it really is. Which means, if we can really nail what an electron is, we can't even determine even close to how fast it's going. And if we really knew how fast it was going, because it's so small, we really don't know where it is. Oh, man. So where is it? Well, it's in the atom. What's it doing? Not sure. Uh, okay, but can we actually confine it to the atom and kind of predict where it is probability-wise? Oh, yeah. And that's where quantum numbers comes in and then all these orbitals that we're going to talk about.